the special use permit ordinance would authorize the use of the carriage house as a four unit multifamily dwelling for the, to be leased to the general public. Um, it would require that the two lots be combined within 60 days of approval, um, with the idea being that, the, that as long as the carriage house is used for multifamily, that the properties would be conveyed together and the um, ownership of the, the single family dwelling um, would be responsible for the entire property. However, if the special use permit was ever abandoned, um, the properties could be resubdivided at that point, as long as they could comply with the underlying zoning. The ordinance would limit the occupancy of the units to no more than one occupant per bedroom, or no more than five total. There's one uh, unit has two bedrooms, and the rest are one bedroom units. It would require um, the typical zoning requirement of one off-street parking space for each dwelling unit, for a total of five parking spaces. Uh, the five parking spaces is the minimum in the zoning ordinance uh, before you have to get, they have to be paved and delineated and lit. So the ordinance would authorize the um, parking to remain gravel and undelineated and unlit. Uh, however, it would, would require it to be screened from the adjacent property. The ordinance would also uh, require that the kitchen counters be replaced. The property is located in the city's single family low density designation in the land use map of the city's master plan. Um, this land use category recommends single family detached dwellings as the primary land use. It recommends the R1 to R5 zoning districts as um, appropriate for these areas. The R1 through R5 only permit single family uh, detached residential and do not permit it even one accessory dwelling unit in an accessory structure. There's also a specific language in the master plan related to the phasing out of multifamily uses in the North Planning District. One of the reasons given for this recommendation is that several neighborhoods within the North District have faced decline as large homes have been converted to single and two family uses to multifamily uses. After holding a public hearing at the City Planning Commission, the City Planning Commission found that the proposed um, special use permit to authorize the four units in the carriage house would not conform to the single family low density in the phasing out of multifamily uses in the city's master plan. Um, they found that when the carriage house assumed the same legal status as all the other carriage houses in the Gitter Park neighborhood, when the seminary use was discontinued and Granting the special use permit could possibly set a precedent for the granting of other special use permits for carriage houses, um, both in the Gitter Park neighborhood as well as the rest of the city. Um, and this, the potential increase of density with the granting of the special use permit would contradict the goals for the low density single family development as set forth in the city's master plan and would be detrimental to the future of the neighborhood. They also discussed um, covenants and deed restrictions. There, there was concern about the property being resubdivided at some point in the future, and the Planning Commission found that um, granting a special use permit as an incentive to keep the properties together um, was not the appropriate way to keep the properties together, that the only way to guarantee that they would stay together would be to put a deed restriction or covenant on the property. Um, further, they found that Financial hardship or granting a financial incentive to a property owner does not meet the criteria for a granting special use permits and could be detrimental to the general welfare of the community involved. Uh, the Planning Commission voted five to two to not recommend approval of the special use permit. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I know there's members of the public here that wish to speak to this item as well. Um. This part of the lot to the east of this property looks from the air under a pile of it was multi-family. Is the adjoining property to the east multi-family? Uh, the adjoining property to the east is multi-family. Yes. And it's in the single family low density block? It is designated single family low density in the city's master plan. However, it is zoned for multi-family use. It is zoned R38. And how many other carriage houses in this area were uh, granted that institutional housing? 
Um, there were other carriage houses that were owned by the seminary. To my knowledge, this is the only one that was granted um, a special variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals. This is the only one? To my, to my knowledge. Yes. Are there other questions?
opportunity to keep the properties united. Um, so uh, we also wanted to let you know that we have uh, quite a bit of neighborhood support. We have over 121 signatures, um, including 100% of our block except for one opponent. Um, over 15 people, over 10% of our uh, signatures are within a one block radius, so they're very close, and they are in fact the people that are impacted. And over 20% of our signatures are either in the one block radius or actually on our street. So we recognize that our neighbors wanted some way to preserve this property for future generations to enjoy, and that it wouldn't end up as three separate homes in some way. Thank you. Thank you. Is there, is there somebody else to speak in favor of this? If you can line up, get the clock going, so if you can line up, it's going to save time. Good evening. My name is Kale, and I've been in the Gunner Park neighborhood on Melrose Avenue for 41 years and six months. I've enjoyed living there, and I find that my neighbors are very nice. The Dobsons have tried everything they can do to make it um, a pretty area. They have planted dogwood trees. They are out there planting grass, flowers, or anything they can do. They mulch and do everything to keep the place gorgeous. And I'm upset that this situation has arisen. And I uh, work at the I work at the seminary in the library. Um, the Dawson who owns the uh, I mean the carriage house and the stone house have made any many improvements to enhance the beauty of the of the area. When the airman came through several years ago, there were seminary students that lived in the carriage house. We had trees across the um, Elrose Avenue, and at that time I worked for a local bank. You could not get to work with those seminary students came out of the carriage house and move those trees. And so by the time I got home that night, I was able to drive my car. So I'm just telling you that the people that have lived in the carriage house have been wonderful people. And uh, I just hope that you will uh, approve the resolution that they have requested. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, President Graziano, members of council. My name is Meg Lawrence. I'm president of the Ginner Park Residents Association. I'm here representing our board, which supports the SUP. When Union Seminary sold this property in 2002, it recognized the problem of selling an uh, 8,000 square foot house with a 2,800 square foot accessory building. They knew correctly that the neighborhood would never support a special use permit for that property as a standalone multifamily dwelling. Their solution was to come up with the lot line that you have seen creating a single family home in a building that never was a single family home. Uh, the question before us as a board looking at this property, which is, was what is the best way to allow for the preservation and upkeep of the carriage house building and keep the properties united. That lot line, uh, which is the current lot line, uh, may meet legal requirements. However, it is absolutely not in keeping with the lots in the Ginner Park neighborhood and it destroys the historic integrity of this property, which is the last three lot property existing in Ginner Park. Um, our board feels that this is an appropriate solution. Um, the use, while uh, we understand different than the variance granted by the Zoning Appeals Board in the 1940s is essentially the same. Uh, the special use permit lowers the density from the time when the seminary owned the property and uh, it does not in any way change the footprint of the existing building. There have been no complaints uh, about this property during the time when the seminary owned it, nor since the Dodsons have purchased it. While we certainly acknowledge all that the Dodsons have done in renovating this house, that is absolutely not why we support this. Uh, we support this as a reasonable solution to the upkeep of a 2,800 square foot accessory building. 
I would like to um, also add that in terms of the 70 carriage houses, many of those buildings are actually garages. Mine is one of them. It's less than 400 square feet, and it actually had chicken coop in the second floor, not any kind of residential apartment. Um, some have said that it's alarmist to think that this property could have been sold with this lot line, but the fact of the matter is that the first owners after the seminary, the first owners who purchased from the seminary indeed intended to sell the house up standalone with uh, the lot line you see right there. Um, it did not happen because the Dodsons offered to purchase both properties and their offer was accepted. But we certainly see no reason why it could not happen again, particularly since some people argue that there is nothing wrong with that building being a single family home um, with a lot that looks exactly like that. Um, thank you for your consideration and I hope you will support this paper. Thank you. Madam President Graciano, Vice President Robertson, members of the council, my name is Jonathan Murdoch Kitt. Uh, I live in the house due north of this property. My wife Noma and I have lived in our house for 24 years. Uh, the happiest day of my life in owning 3503 Seminary Avenue was when a family bought 3501 Seminary Avenue. Because we lived there since 1986 and the seminary owned it. They had uh, some students and other folks living in the, the uh, carriage house, but the main house was largely empty. They used it for special events, but it was empty. I used to walk around there and call the seminary regularly when I saw anything out of the order. It was a house like this, the main, the main house, with over 8,000 square feet, has to be loved. I'm not saying the seminary didn't love it. There was nobody at the seminary to love it. And unfortunately, and the Presbyterians that they are, they weren't very good stewards of this piece of property. Uh, and when it was bought as a single family a house, uh, as I said, Norman and I were the happiest we could ever have been because the family breathed life into the place. They loved it. They cared for it. One of the things you've got to be concerned about is this. No is going to buy 3501 Seminary Avenue as a mansion, 8,000 square feet, unless they can control that carriage house behind it. You, no one will buy that property if that carriage house were separated in any way, because it is right there in their backyard. They have to control it. Otherwise, they wouldn't be interested in buying that. Uh, that is the only three lot uh, piece of property uh, residential nature in Bitter Park. My wife and I have two lots. Uh, one of the things that uh, I would tell you is that in the 24 years that we've lived there, all the time that there have been tenants in the carriage house apartment, I've never had one complaint. Uh, not loud music, not parking, not anything. Uh, I know that the tenants have parked their cars on Melrose Avenue at times. I know there's a requirement for off-street parking. But the truth of the matter is the seminary uses both sides of Melrose Avenue to park cars for students and ministers and other people coming to the library either to go to school or to do research for their, their uh, sermons on Sunday. And my big concern there was, oh my gosh, you can't get a, a fire department. You wouldn't like it. I, I want to be able to get a fire truck through there. Well, the fire department came. My wife and I said we had a concern about that. They brought the fire trucks out. Cars parked on both sides of Melrose. Ran, well, it's a one way street from Seminary uh, eastbound out to uh, Chamberlain Avenue. They ran the fire trucks through there, the biggest ones they had. The fire, the fire department said no problem. So, my objection, my concern about the parking there was, was removed. Uh, the Dodsons have been good neighbors. The, the folks that they have rented to have been good neighbors. And I hope you heard it when somebody said it earlier this carriage house apartment has never been used as a single family dwelling. We know that the master plan came along long after this house was built. It was built prior to 1909. It was used originally as a carriage house. And the driver for the family that lived there lived in the carriage house. 
It was the seminary that converted it to uh, four units and five bedrooms in 1949. And that's kind of the problem again, because when the Herzogs originally bought the place from the seminary, and then the Dodsons bought the property from the Herzogs, there was a skip. They didn't, they didn't realize that there was a problem. And that's why we're all in front of you today about this. Uh, it's a good use to keep it multifamily. That gerrymandered sort of lot line to make it a single family is the worst thing you can do for Ginner Park. Uh, and you have to realize that the, the master plan would involve almost a taking by taking this, this carriage house and trying to make it single family when it's never been that way. I'll be happy to respond to questions, Madam President, if there are. Thank you very much. We're going to just remember that next speaker is that we have like a certain amount of time. I'll be very fast. Madam President, Madam Vice President, members of council, I'm Ann Williams. I live in the next block, 3607 Seminary. I have probably one of the 70 um, carriage houses slash garages that the Planning Commission referred to. So I want to speak to that because a lot of the argument that's been made is that if you grant this SUP, you're setting an undue precedent that others of us might take advantage of. Um, we do have a five car, if you will, garage. It was lived in when our house was built in 1908. I wouldn't dream to ask anyone to live in this property as is. In order to keep cool, put in appropriate, maybe we have to have a bathroom, there's no bathroom there. A kitchen would probably cost me $100,000. The return on that for me after expenses would be, if I was lucky, $3,000 a year. A very poor investment. And as a consequence, I think that the major argument that undergirds the Planning Commission's uh, recommendation to deny this, that others of us in the neighborhood will be besieging you with requests to do the same thing, is fallacious. It is not economic, and the Dodson situation is totally um, singular, not just because they only have a th the only three lot property, but because the property had already been converted. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Madam President, Madam Vice President, members of council, my name is Robert Ulrich. I live at 3604 Chamberlain Avenue, about a block from the subject property. I'm primarily interested in the preservation of this property. It is a keystone of our neighborhood. The thought that you would convert a 100-year-old carriage house into single family, I think is simply misguided. I would submit to you that when the master plan was approved, this property was already <coughs> being used for the approved use of multifamily by the seminary. The actual wording in the master plan says no additional multifamily development. This property was in fact used at a lower or at a higher density than the applicants are proposing at the time the master plan was proposed. Uh, I'm also concerned about the possibility that this lot could be further divided. You never know what people are going to do in the future and you will find people not like the Dodson's or my family that are interested in historic preservation but would want to come in here and subdivide it. I think that is um, that possibility is removed by the approval of this SUP, and I would encourage you all to support it wholeheartedly. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Jean McCarthy, and I live at 3504 Seminary Avenue, across the street from the Dodsons and down two houses. I've lived there for 35 years. I've raised my family, my dogs, my cats, and everything else on that block. I walk it at least twice a day. I see what's going on in the neighborhood and I'm very aware of, of what's happening with the Dodson's property. Um, the first thing I want to say is that I also own one of those 70 quote, potential um, carriage houses that, was, that were mentioned earlier. Mine consists of uh, three sides and a roof and it's made of corrugated metal. So neither fear that I'll be asking you to make any changes for me, okay? The second thing I want to say is that the city, as you well know, has a campaign called Eyes on the Street, which is for safety purposes, and I just want to reiterate that having occupancy in the carriage house with the kind of people that the Dodsons have living there is an excellent way for us to maintain eyes, not just on the street, 
but on the alleys and in our backyards. Because of the size of the property and of the homes in Ghetto Park and because of the mature landscaping, we actually need lots of eyes. The third thing that I want to address is the historical integrity of the property. Um, I've known the Dodsons since they moved in. They've done everything any human beings could possibly do to build that house into a keystone property in our neighborhood. Um, they are active on the Ginner Park um, Neighborhood Association. Rebecca is a key member of the board. I served on the board with her. I trust them completely to do everything within their power to maintain the historical integrity of that property. And I would submit that keeping, make, supporting their petition so that this becomes, in essence, a, a property that they're in charge of and that they're managing and that they're handling is to everybody's advantage who lives in Ghetto Park. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madam President, Madam Vice President, members of council, thank you for the opportunity, and also, by the way, my friends in Ghetto Park, thank you very much for the opportunity to like to speak in support of the special use permit. I will offer you, I'm, I'm Tom Williams, and I live at 3607 Seminary Avenue, which is roughly a block away. I uh, would like to mention basically three arguments I would make in favor of granting the special use permit. The first is historical, which some of my neighbors have already spoken to. I want to add a little background to that. My father and his family grew up at, at the 3500 Seminary, which is the property across the street. Similarly made of granite, it is not nearly as grand as the property at 3501. Uh, yet they also had a carriage house, and I have documentary evidence that they had folks living um, in the second floor of their structure from the very beginning. You have to remember that in those days, which was really basically the turn of the century, 1900, 1908, 1910, up until the Depression, uh, there were not appliances. People had servants to help them take care of properties, and these property carriage houses were used for servants and their families to provide adequate housing, which is the reason why these carriage houses had initially at least water in them, if not full bathrooms. I don't believe that the, uh, the property across the street did, but I believe the property at 3500 did have bathrooms and other, and other appurtenances that were necessary for a family. The second argument I would make is that the neighborhood is best served by recognizing that this is a unique property, it's one of the largest houses in Grand Park. It is an unusual property, it's been used because of that, it's been used for years because of its beautiful public spaces. The main residence was used by the seminary as a show place in Grand Park and it's frequently had its Christmas parties there. So we're talking about a beautiful grand house and the carriage house is built in exactly the same style, also a grand. So I think from a historical perspective, it should be recognized as well as in the SUP granted. Thirdly, it's economic and legal. As a, as a resident of the neighborhood, we believe that the current partition, and in fact any partition you could imagine, would be doing a disservice to the way the Gunner Park tradition of houses are, are met. would not have proper uh, space for backyard, side yard, and so forth if the property were subdivided and allowed to be subdivided. As it is today, it's probably a, the unique property of its, of its type in the north side of Richmond. Uh, in summary, I hope that you will support the SUP. I think you'll find the vast majority of our neighborhood in my neighborhood to get a part of so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Are those who are here speaking in opposition to this paper, they come forward. I was at the Planning Commission meeting last week when this SUP was denied 
Mr. Law made some important comments that I thought I would paraphrase. He said, this is not as complicated as it sounds. This really protects the financial investment of the current owner. It sets a precedent that some future owner could argue, successfully or not, I don't know. This case has been overblown to say this is the only way we can protect and preserve the historic nature of the property. That is just, that just clearly is not so, it is not true. And also, uh, just from what I was hearing, I'd like to say that I have a brand new garage that would not cost very much to convert to multifamily use. It would be tight, but it could be done. Why should you vote against the SUP? The preservation of the property as a single parcel is not guaranteed. Proposed use of this property would, cons uh, would constitute an increase of intensity in the use. Parking. Melrose is a narrow access street and that is already used by the seminary students and employees and now JSARC students as well. Burden on the city. These types of apartments in Gunner Park put an added burden on trash collection, fire, and police services. The city does not have the resources to monitor them for safety and code violations. The applicants can apply for a historic easement. I believe that granting this special use permit would constitute a precedent which would lead to conversion of other accessory structures in Gunner Park for multifamily use. We are discussing a decision that you are making today, in 2010, what you decide will have consequences for years to come. Things don't happen overnight. My neighbors and I have invested money, sweat equity, and have become involved members of the community. It has taken years to rebuild and renovate properties in Gitter Park. There is still work to be done. But make no mistake about it, homeowners are moving in, kids are attending public schools, the sense of community in Gitter Park is real. We have a lot to lose if accessory buildings start going the way of multifamily units. Immediate neighbors are not the only ones affected. This one SUP, if granted, could easily pave the way for others like it. Please oppose this request for a special use permit. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. My name is Lori Poole, and I live at 3500 Seminary, just directly across from the property in question. Um, there's a number of reasons why I'm opposing this special use permit. Um, my opposition came on the fact that the property was um, put on the market, and one of the things I'd like to make very clear is that there's nothing in this special use permit that will guarantee any of the things that we've heard supporters talking about. Um, the lot could be split again. There's absolutely nothing that prevents that. It would be very hard to monitor the conditions of the special use permit, not necessarily with the current owners, but with a new owner, who I have to guess that at some point in the future there will be new owners. Um, the density, I think, definitely is a problem. We are looking for single family use in the Ginner Park area. When we bought our house, there were 14 bedrooms in use by the seminary. It was used as a dorm. I'm quite certain that if I had come here or come to the Ginner Park Residents Association and proposed continued use of even some of those bedrooms, I'd have been shot down immediately. The idea is we're buying these homes to restore them to single family. I do not understand why multi-family use of a carriage house is considered more historical than single family. I, I don't understand that concept. And given the fact that it leads to density, that it leads to um, possible owners who aren't tied into the community as strongly as people actually living there, I can't see how multifamily is going to be a better historical use of a property that was once used for family. Precedent here is a big issue. I understand that some of the 70 properties identified by staff are small. They were identified because of their footprint, that they had a footprint big enough to accommodate 
what's considered a legal, um, a legal rental, I guess. But I can personally attest that 28, there are at least 28 accessory buildings in the surrounding areas, not just on Seminary, but on Hawthorne, on Noble, on some of the other streets, that are 1,000 square feet plus. They are all two-story. Some of them are already inhabited with tenants, and some of the supporters of the SUP own those houses that are currently house tenants. I can speak that my carriage house is certainly big enough to convert into multifamily. It's about the same size as the house in question. I could argue that going from 14 students in the main house to two apartments in my carriage house would be not so bad. We also own a house on Hawthorne Avenue. It has an accessory building that's approximately 1,600 square feet. It has a bathroom. It has um, everything but a kitchen. It has separate egress. It is bordered by an apartment building. These could all, are all arguments I could make and come to you and say, why can't I get a special use permit too? Primarily, I cannot see a reason for making a special exception here. The applicants have other recourse. There are other uses for the building. If indeed they were misled as to whether or not the property was legal or not, there should be legal resources. Um, a special use permit should not be used as a tool to remedy a situation like that. Um, and again, I want to emphasize that while there are conditions on the permit, um, the property has been used as apartments um, for seven years without it coming to anyone's notice. So oversight is clearly a problem. There's going to be very little way we can monitor the conditions. Um, for these reasons and others that you'll hear from other people, I ask that you deny the permit. Madam President, Madam Vice President, Madam Council, good evening. It's good to see you again. Uh, my name is Charlie Durador, and I live in the Fan District, so I don't have a dog directly in this hunt, if you will, but I think that all Richmonders do. Uh, I think, looking at this case, that this case has got some spillover effect that could come to each of your districts. Um, there are uh, buildings, outbuildings in each of your districts that could bring these, uh, that owners could bring cases very similar to this case uh, as the years go on. The Dodsons have done a wonderful job rehabilitating the property, I'm sure, and I'm sure that they're great owners. But when I've gone to the Board of Zoning Appeals or come before this body itself and ask for the similar uh, actions that these folks are looking for, I've always been asked, what happens after you, Charlie? What happens after you sell the property? This is the argument I think you have to look at before making a judgment tonight. It's not about the Dodsons. It's about the real estate itself. Who who buys that real estate from the Dodsons is the question. Who buys real estate after those folks? And who is going to be responsible, as the Dodsons have been, in keeping up the property, in making sure that only four or five people live there? Staff has already reported to you this evening that they're not, they don't have the manpower to look after certain items. Who's going to make sure that we have the manpower? You to look after that they don't load it up with 8 or 12 people in there. I'm concerned not about this property specifically. I'm concerned about what happens in the Fan District and other parts of the city as regards to this decision. It is my point that you all here tonight are making precedent. That has been up for argument all day with discussions I've had with council members. I think it, it is precedent that you're sitting here this evening, and I would ask that you either deny the SUP or continue this paper so that neighborhood associations throughout the city might meet and discuss the ramifications of this case. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, I'm Michael Grove. Um, I've lived in Gitter Park for 30 years. Uh, a lot of great things have happened in that 30 years. Uh, our property values were depressed when 
moved in. They're they're half much higher now. They've got a school in the neighborhood. Uh, we have young families moving in. It's uh, it's a delightful area, and I do not want to slip back to that by approving this request. Uh, this is about the future owners, as the last gentleman has said. A future owner buys in hard times and. If you can't maintain it, then we've got a problem. If you can't afford to take, keep up the house like the Dotsons, if you can't manage the apartments, uh, the city doesn't have any resources, as has been told, and the city can't tell how many people are in these apartments. The landlord, landlord um, owning this house also has restrictions about gaining access. He can't just walk in and catch the people in the, the apartment. So there's a concern about that. One of the big issues I see is the Planning Commission on Monday voted this down for very strong reasons. It was, they were careful to ask all the questions, the Many of the issues that the people for it um, went away. And my concern is that we're overriding, from political reasons, this um, decision by the professionals. They, they thoroughly met it, they asked the questions, and unfortunately, I don't believe any of that got passed forward to you council people, except for Mr. Connor, who was the chairman. Uh, with the SUP, there is no control over how many, as I've said, live in the apartments. Uh, the Planning Commission also said they would not per permit additional SUPs if they had voted it. And uh, in fairness, the council will have to override the next person who comes and is turned down by the planning commission if, this, if we're going to do what, we're, what we did in the uh, land use committee. And I, that, that greatly concerns me. After all, the, it was acknowledged in the planning commission that the neighbor next door rents. So I see if we're going to vote for it, we should vote for them to rent as well. And this is a neighborhood issue. Um, few in the Ginner Park actually know, they, I know they've gotten together a large group, but we have 2,100 residents in the neighborhood. I would venture to say 75% do not know about this. Our Ginner Park paper until several days before the uh, Planning Commission would not send a notice out. And they sent a notice out and had a little meeting at our request. However, they would not allow the opposition to speak. So it's, it seems that that wouldn't happen, but it did happen. And that's why um, in, the, in their in park letter, the details were sketchy and you know, when you're, when you're talking about a strong issue like this, you need to provide information on both sides. And that way, the chips will fall where they are. This property is not unique, as has been told. I mean, as I mentioned, the property decided is, is, is a stately home. There are others, and I don't see us rewarding the applicants because of that. The special use permit adds value to this property. Uh, the applicant has already tried to sell, and I personally expect them to turn around and try to sell it again. Or try to sell, even though they were unable to successful the last time. In other words, once they get this, the value will greatly enhance and allow them to find a buyer. And I see them flipping the property. I mean, after all, they've only lived in the community for seven years. Mr. Rogiano, I appreciate your removing this from the uh, consent.
set agenda and give us the opportunity tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Madam President, members of the council. My name is Robbie Poole, and I live with my wife, Laurie, at 3500 Cemetery Avenue across the street from this property. One of the unfortunate things that I've noticed in serving the city on the Planning Commission and the Board of Zoning Appeals is that there are cases that sometimes divide neighborhoods. This is one of them, and it's unfortunate. This case is not about the Dodsons. They've been wonderful people, and they've done a magnificent job with a nice piece of property. What this case is about is the fact that we have rules that we have to live by. They talk about the property being used since 1949. This property has never been used as multifamily in a lawful manner. The seminary was allowed to use the property for educational use only. That was the special exception that was allowed by the Board of Zoning Appeals in 1949. That doesn't make it multifamily. They were restricted to having students in that property, not multifamily. In 2002, when the seminary decided that they would sell this property, they engaged the services of a very fine law firm. They went to the city and they asked the city, what can we do with this property? And the city told them, first and foremost, you have to remove those four units before you can do anything. They did, in fact, decide that they would divide this property into two pieces because the lot size is large. It's an acre and a half. And it has enough square footage or lot area in order to create two single family units. The seminary thought that was the best way to try to maximize the dollars that they could get from the property. They passed along the obligation to re remove those four units to the buyer. Unfortunately, the seminary didn't follow the rules that the Zoning Administrator gave to them in May of 2002. The buyer from the seminary didn't follow the rules. And when the Dodson's bought the property, they either inadvertently or not chose to use that as multifamily. It's never been used legally as multifamily. When they started using that in 2003, it was an illegal use. They got state tax credits, federal tax credits, and they got city abatement on their taxes when they did that. Your staff, Ms. Markham tonight, and also at the Planning Commission, has told you and told the Planning Commission that this special use permit does not meet even the first criteria of a special use permit. And I know that you're all familiar with the ordinance that says it has to meet six criteria. The first of which is that it not be detrimental to the neighborhood. Your staff tells you this is detrimental to the neighborhood. Why? Why is it detrimental? It's detrimental because the master plan that was established in the year 2000 said in the North District, if you have the opportunity to reduce the multifamily uses of property in the North District, it should be done. This is exactly that opportunity. It should have been done in 2002. The zoning administrator advised the seminary that it should be reduced to one family. They didn't do it. The buyer didn't do it, and neither did the Dobsons. I am familiar with the special use permit process in a number of ways. First, for 37 years, I've been a land use attorney. I've presented before this council before as representing people who asked for a special use permit. I have also served on your board of zoning appeals and your planning commission, and I see special use permits every month as a member of that planning commission. And I understand that one of the most important things that needs to be taken into account is what does the district representative, what does the council person for that district think of this particular special use permit? And that's particularly important when it affects only that district. But this case doesn't affect just 
that district. It affects the fan. It affects Church Hill. It affects the West End. It affects the South Side. And that's why I ask you to use your independent judgment in making a decision on a case that has citywide implications. It has importance not just for Gilmer Park. It has importance for the city of Richmond as a whole. Your planning commission, and I will tell you that I recused myself and did not participate in the planning commission hearing, had a long and very, very uh, straightforward hearing before it, which lasted far longer than this case. And they voted five to two in opposition to special use permit. So you have your staff saying, please deny. You have your planning commission saying, please deny. You have the opponents that have spoken to you tonight and an additional 61 people on our petition who say, please deny. The one thing that, this, that the applicant could have done in this special use permit to guarantee that this lot would never have been split would be to put a deed restriction that says, well, from time forward, this lot cannot be split. They won't do that. I ask you to consider that. This case is important not only because the people that have come before you tonight that oppose this have appeared before you. This is important for the entire city. This is important for the independent judgment of the nine council persons who sit and make judgment on special use permits. Special use permits are a very important aspect of this council's power. It should be used judiciously. It should be used in only those sets of circumstances that are very creative and very narrow. And I would submit to you, because of the precedental effect that this can have on the city of Richmond, this is not the special use permit that should be granted. This is a special use permit that should be denied. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Now, certainly future SCPs may have some of those criteria, but as I look at this, I do not believe I can think of one that has all eight of those issues. Specifically, after Ms. Martin informed us that this is the only house that they are aware of that was a carriage house, used as institutional housing. And I think that that's something that we have to take serious consideration. The next is density. Yes, there is a density problem throughout the city. Either it's too low or too high, depending on where you are. And I know that if somebody wants to convert a carriage house to van, I would more than likely be against it if it did not have a very good reason for the need to do that. Here, 1949 to 2002, it had institutional housing uses, which is not the same as one my family. However, the restrictions put in place by this SUP keep those density numbers exactly what they've been for over 60 years. It reduces the number of people, I think, in total bedrooms, including the big house, from uh, 14 to 10, if I'm not mistaken. It does protect the parts of the software requires that they both be joined together within 60 days. If the applicant does not do that, they lose the rest of the They can't have it. If anybody in the future wants to divide this and sell off the multifamily uh, unit on this property, they can certainly divide the property, but again, the SCP is gone and they're back to a single family. Obviously, I'm not a fan of the shape of the um, parcel, but that's not enough to consider one way or the other out of it. I do like the fact that this SCP encourages off street parking, and it is about as unique a situation as I have. The one thing that I think is a really good point that the first I brought up is that you can't think about this based on whether or not the diocese is going to do it right now. You have to think about it about whatever building is going to purchase the property next and what they're going to try to do about it. And I think the property owners in this case have addressed this concern by the restrictions they put in their SCPs. Sure, they could have done more. Uh, I would wait for a bet that in almost every ordinance or SCP we look at, we can do more to protect or we can do less to protect. But I think they've done what they can to make sure that this is protected. If this was just a situation where the Dodson's have bought an apartment building attached to their house by a parcel, and it was a legal purpose, I would have no problem voting against it, telling them to convert a single family and move on. Uh, if I thought this was going to set a precedent throughout the city as far as feasibility of creating parcel, or excuse me, creating carriage house housing in other neighborhoods, I believe against this. That's not the case here. And uh, the neighborhood association in favor of this, plus the reason I've stated, I'm going to support this work. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Mr. Brown? I feel as though I need to clarify some, some things here as to what I do, basically. You know, I serve on planning, I'm also the chairman of the land use committee. And when we first heard this at planning, of course, Mr. Poole excused himself. I had no idea he had anything to do with this, uh, or was so passionate to be involved in this particular SUP. <clears throat> and I had tried to get in touch with Mr. Pilbert on his thoughts about it ahead of time. Uh, I could not get in touch with Mr. Pilbert. I did not have an idea of how his, what his thoughts were. And I went into the first meeting thinking that I would just abstain. I wouldn't say anything. I'd let him know until I hear more about it. But as it went on further, uh, you know, everything they said seemed reasonable to me. The property stuff was kept up very, very well. Uh, it was, had a lot of community support. So I voted for the session okay. The second time it came to planning, we heard it the second time. Um, at that point, uh, I still had not heard back from Mr. Hilbert, and with that in mind, I really didn't have anything to hang my hat on, so that time I voted against the session. From that point, it moved on to land use. We got to land use, Mr. Hilbert came down and he spoke to it in his, his support. And I felt like, as a council person, I really need to go with the council person on this. He knows his neighborhood, he knows what's going on, and, you know, frankly, uh, I honestly uh, feel it's, it's a good it's a good issue. I don't see this being duplicated across the country, or much less our city. So I, tonight I, I stand to support this for uh, Mr. Mr. Hilbert and, and the folks down there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connor. Any comments? Mr. 
next door to these properties. I get reports all the time of lot of properties in the district. And I write these folks a letter, the owner of the property, let them know that my office has received complaints about it. Not once, not one time, has anyone lived near or right next door to these blighted properties. As a matter of fact, on a lot of occasions, they live out of state, they live out of the region, they live out of the city. And unfortunately, uh, our laws in Virginia do not allow us to pursue people that live out of state. And this is, this is a difficult situation with blight. And so, to me, any owner of this property, future owners of this property, anyone, will have the incentive to make sure that the residents of this carriage house are doing right by the community. And I cannot see where it would be in their interest to ignore this property as so many owners of blighted properties do. There's no evidence that the, uh, that the applicant knew of these restrictions. So this isn't a case of somebody skirting the rules, putting it in everyone's face, and then asking for forgiveness once uh, something comes around. These are folks who, I believe, tried to do the right thing, and once it was pointed out, they tried to go through the system. None of the neighbors that live in this block, <coughs> excuse me, the 3500 block of seminary, uh, opposed this SUV. Excuse me, the neighbors to the immediate south are the seminary, and there's overwhelming support in the block uh, south of the seminary, as well as uh, the 3600 block of the seminary. The board of the Residents Association voted to support this SUP. They also declared, or excuse me, called a special meeting about this matter. Now, uh, some have argued that the notice on that was inadequate, but uh, I don't recall in the 14 years that I have lived in Gunner Park that the association has ever called a meeting about an SUP. The board always takes a position on it, uh, but nonetheless, uh, this was, a, was an open meeting. Uh, members of the association received a detailed explanation of the board's actions in the newsletter, which goes out to all members. Uh, uh, and in some cases, uh, not all, and I don't know about this particular issue, but in some cases, all the residents of Gunner Park. And I was, uh, I was at that special meeting.
special use permits by right by law are limited to just that property. We can't cure all of the ills of the city or wipe out any foreseeable contingencies of the future with a special use permit. I'm going to have to rely on the judgment of future councils to make sure that this doesn't happen. But I will say uh, that I want to make very clear the minutes this meeting that this is not to be looked upon as the gate is wide open and everybody come down and fill out a special use permit application. So that's not what this does. And I'll do uh, what I can to judge special use permits on their own merit and not look back that we've done this with this property, and et cetera. This is a special use permit. And while I appreciate the work of the staff, uh, we always can't agree. And I respect the people who oppose the special use permit. They are good people who have invited me into their home, and the people who have come to my home. This is a, a difficult decision, but again, uh, this isn't about me, it's about this neighborhood, and I hope that after this is over, that we as a neighborhood uh, get our part and come back together uh, and put this behind us. And so I ask my colleagues this evening to vote to support this special use permit to allow our neighborhood to be in meeting. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Elbert. You probably call me the vote of one thing. And this is a very emotional issue. I want to thank all the people who came down here to speak to this. Um, and I do hope that this neighborhood can go back together after this vote. Um, Madam Clerk, please call the question. You can vote in one. I have a number one. Mr. Conner.